Hey, what's up? I'm Rafael de Furia, aka Rafa D is me, and I am back at it again on another beautiful Friday night. And this week, I am going to answer a question that was asked by one of you guys just a few days ago. A topic that I have definitely been thinking a lot about uh, making a video about. So it just happened to be the right time. And by the title of this video, I'm sure you have a good guess as to what the subject will be. So before we get too much deeper into the video, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be greatly appreciated as it does help out the channel. And for other ways to help make videos like this possible and to support the channel, you can go to the links down in the more info section below. And of course, as always, a huge thank you to those of you who have been helping to make these videos possible. So thank you. From Joe M, no stranger to the channel, hey Rafi, as the country goes nuts over the Super Bowl, and we all know you have been away from the US for nearly 11 years, I was wondering, what are some of the things that you miss about living here? Are big events like fireworks on the 4th of July, Halloween, Thanksgiving, or the Super Bowl and the World Series something that you miss? I think I remember you saying something about missing American burgers. Oh, definitely I have said something about that. I have said plenty about that. <laughs> Uh, but what about the things that we do collectively as a country, like watching a sporting event or voting? Does any of that make you long for your time here? Just curious. Thanks, Rafi. Joe. One of the reasons why I wanted to answer this question is because it has definitely been something that has been a reoccurring theme of thoughts uh, that have come up over the years that I've lived abroad. Uh, I am very close to that 11th year now. And this was a subject that years ago, before I started making these videos, when I was looking up kind of people who were talking about these subjects, again, not really finding what I was looking for, which was one of the reasons why I decided to make my YouTube channel. I just wasn't finding content like this. Now it seems there are people who have been talking about this, but I like to look into something before I make a life-changing decision or a large financial uh, commitment. Then I like to have the information ahead of time. And I was curious to hear what people had to say about being expat. So many people are talking about, oh, it's so wonderful and beautiful to be an expat, but you don't hear about the difficult moments. And those are just as important. You guys know I've been talking about those recently because I think those are very important to think about if you're considering a life abroad. It's a tough thing to answer because the answer is yes and no. For the first few years, I would say it was the most difficult, that I did miss things a lot, that I really did miss living in the US, or maybe I should say life in the US, my life that I had in the US. But as time went on, I slowly realized that it wasn't necessarily living in the US that I was really missing, but maybe more specific moments um, from my life that like, you miss like from when you're a child, like those childhood moments like that you miss maybe spending time with your grandparents or something like that. It was more specifically those things. Growing up, I was never really into sports. So uh, the, 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 the Super Bowl or World Series, any of that stuff. I mean, my grandparents would watch it if they had it on. Like I would be in the living room sometimes because I did grow up very close to my grandparents. So that was always like something like that happening. Um, it was, <laughs> I feel like my grandfather either had like one of three things on. It was Law and Order, the Discovery Channel, or a baseball game, <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> oh no, Wheel of Fortune. My grandmother was very insistent on that. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, Price is Right. Yeah, <laughs> the classics. <laughs> you know, the beautiful, the best, the best, the tip of the top, the toppity tip. <laughs> Probably the thing that I miss the most and also the thing that has been the maybe the one thing over the years that's really made me ever seriously toy with the idea of moving back to America or not, not, not actually not even necessarily moving back to the US, but moving to an English speaking country is that I really miss speaking my language. I really do miss that. I it's it's nice to like my English, I do make a lot of mistakes because I've been living abroad for so long now. But for me, technical, like techie English or legal English, all of that I can get through. Like I have no problem with that. But anytime when you try to throw that into another language, even basic parts of the language, I just feel like a kid fumbling around. Like, a, like I feel like an elementary school kid, like that's just fumbling around. And I can't express myself the same way in another language as I can in English. As time went on, I realized that maybe the friends that I missed, we were just going in different directions. And because of the age that I 
left America. That's just really a time in your life where you you and your friends are really kind of starting to go off in different directions anyway. I mean, if you're staying in the same area, even you could be living very close to each other, but still be moving in different directions in life. Maybe what I do miss also is how easy some things are, or how cheap some things are, or just the foods that I know and kind of those comfort foods. Uh, some of you may have seen that I posted this week on the community tab uh, here on YouTube or on my Facebook if, uh, if you follow me over there for Facebook friends. You may have seen this week that I posted about trying to buy um, peanut butter here in Italy. And then just for like a normal jar of peanut butter, it was like 10 euros or whatever. It doesn't even make a difference the price, but it was ridiculous in cost. So some things like that, those simple things. Yes, you can get peanut butter in Italy. No, it's not easy to find it in where I live. You buy in a tiny little jar and it's not that great in my opinion. So I've been looking for other places to get it. Um, I'm not worried about finding peanut butter. It's just one of those little things where it's like, I miss the ease of certain things. Like, okay, fine. There is something to be said for trying to adapt to the local foods and and what people eat eat locally but at the same time like I can't help that Americanness, even though I may not be the most American guy out there. Even um, talking about that specific question about like Super Bowl, maybe I do miss like gatherings, like maybe like a 4th of July barbecue or a 4th of July parade, like that kind of stuff sometimes, but over the years, it's just kind of fallen into the background of just that's what was and it's not a part of my life. I haven't even done Thanksgiving in I don't know how many years. Have I even done it since living abroad? I don't think so. Maybe once. And actually, even the first time that I probably watched the Super Bowl, sat down to watch it, was after I had already left America. And that was only because I was hanging out with friends and there was a Super Bowl party. And me being a video guy, I actually was watching it more for the commercials than the game itself. I was much more interested in analyzing the productions rather than watching the game. I mean, I was impressed by some aspects of the game, nothing to do with the game itself, but the way that they were capturing the game, or just kind of nerdy video techie things. Yeah, I, in the, if you had asked me years ago, I would have said, definitely, I miss America. I absolutely just long for it. But after all these years abroad, that's kind of faded away because it's become so much less a part of my life. And after being in various different countries, I see that I can kind of have my life wherever I am and that I've kind of moved in a direction of having almost the same type of thing wherever I go because I mostly work from home and I enjoy being inside in my home. And so like the surroundings, I love it. And that's why I'm in Italy, but it's not that I have to be here. It's I choose to be here, even though it's not easy to be here. And I sacrificed a lot to be here. I would say, yeah, there's maybe, I miss some of the places. I miss some of the things, some of the experiences, maybe going to, maybe some of the malls that I grew up going to. And before actually I was living in a place that had Amazon Prime, I was thinking, man, wow, like um, people in America don't even realize how great they've got it because like they just have all of these different services that are like lickety split, they're just there. Um, but now that I live in Italy and they have stuff like Amazon Prime, like okay, it's it's feeling a little bit more like living in the modern world, uh, but there are definitely, sometimes like in the places where I lived, it feels almost cut off, and um, to purchase certain things, like um, uh, I've recently kind of, I've always had, I've always been a camera nerd, but I've been wanting to get into, um, into film photography for a long time, so if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see um, what I've been posting for, with some of my film photography, and I've been watching all these videos and just seeing how much I've been doing research online and just seeing how much cheaper film is in the States. Um, although developing in the States seems to be a lot more expensive than where I live. I can get my film developed for really cheap. So overall, it's cheaper here. Um, but the film itself, like a roll of film that would cost maybe four or five euros here in America might cost anywhere between three and four dollars. So purchasing maybe things that are secondhand um, or going to an electronics store and being able to try the thing before you buy it. Uh, like those big stores like 
Best Buy. Oh, I used to love Best Buy um, or GameStop. Although actually here in Italy, they do have GameStop, but not where I live. But I'm also not much of a gamer anymore. Probably another one of the things that I miss a lot is food. Uh, I do love Italian food. I grew up on it. But at the same time, there are those aspects of American cuisine that I just, oh, nachos, burgers, pizza. Yes, American pizza. There will be a lot of people that don't want to admit it, but American pizza is not actually too bad. You will find Italians that will even say, okay, I tried American pizza when I was in America. I get it now. They're like, they tell that to you quietly when no one else is listening. <laughs> While I do enjoy a good Neapolitan style pizza, just a good Italian pizza, there's something about like a giant family sized pizza that you know you can't eat or that you shouldn't eat all by yourself. <laughs> Uh, like that greasy Pizza Hut dough with the stuffed crust. There's just those times that I do have that craving for that type of food and I really do miss that. And I know it's blasphemy to even think such a thing. But after 10 years of being abroad, you do realize those things that maybe that were comfortable. And maybe it's just the age that I'm getting to now where I realize I think it's also personally a combination of the age that I've reached along with having been abroad for so long becoming aware of certain things that I really did miss and having the option now to get some of those back in my life of what's more comfortable where I am comfortable what I am comfortable with getting to know myself better in that way I also came to that realization that yes there are aspects of living in America that I do miss but Actually living there, not necessarily. Maybe I do also miss um, living in a larger space. Even the smallest places that I lived in in America would still be considered large um, in many Italian areas. I think there are certain parts of life, though, that might be easier abroad, like in Italy at least. Like where I live, I really don't feel like I need a car. I don't even want one. Uh, it would be more of a headache and a hassle to park it and have a parking space for it. And it just... I, I can walk to everywhere where I want to get to in my town. If I need to go anywhere else, yes, that could be annoying. But with the train or plane, like, it's not that crazy. Yes, there's definitely that, like, extra time going and coming because, like, I have to get to the train station uh, or I have to get back from the train station. But I don't find that there would be that many times when I would even have a desire to even get in a car, like to even, there's not usually a place that I would like to go drive to, maybe like once every few months, there's something that is like, okay, that would be worth driving to, but otherwise, I find everything very accessible, but that was also one of the reasons why I chose where I live, is because of that accessibility, I think maybe if I were to live on the west coast of the U.S. or most places in the U.S. that I would definitely think that, yeah, okay, a car is necessary because everything is so big and far from the next place that having a car there is definitely necessary in a lot of areas. Maybe if I were to be someplace like New York City, which I would never consider. Maybe there was a time when I was younger that I would have loved it, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, in a place like that, maybe it wouldn't even be worth having a car. If I were to live out in the country, though, then that would be a different story. Like, if I were to live, like, in some small village someplace, then having a car definitely would be necessary. I do miss also sometimes how easy things are in America. Like, if you go to sign up for something or if you go want, if you want to go take care of something, customer service in America is amazing. It is out of this world. You can actually return things. <laughs> That is a big thing that a lot of people don't realize once they leave the States is that if you're buying things, it's very often difficult to return them, um, which is one of the reasons why I really like Amazon. Uh, I, I think it's horrible to not support a local place, but sometimes it's very difficult when the local place is maybe 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 times the price of what it might be on Amazon. And then on Amazon on top, even if it's maybe only a few euros more, they just have that return policy, which is so much better. And it, because returning things in Italy, <laughs> yeah, no. 
yeah, that's definitely something I've been avoiding for a while. Or there's certain things like maybe the way that things work here, like going back to when I was talking about like linguistically how I get frustrated sometimes. I was dealing with a, a problem with my internet company where they said that I needed to pay for something, but I had already been charged for it or something weird had happened and they were trying to charge me like a really crazy amount of money for something that I should not have been paying for because whatever it was a whole ridiculous thing and it ended up going around in circles and then the company was calling me like three times a day trying to get this thing to happen even once i went to the local um like one of their local shops to try and take care of this it's still like once i everything was completely taken care of because from one system to another system it didn't get handed off for whatever reason um they still kept calling me like three times a day and it was just like too much but not being able to call the company up and speak to them in my own language and deal with somebody in that way like to at least be able to fend for myself it's it's a horrible feeling not to be able to take care of something like that on your own because i tried calling them up i tried speaking to them on the phone but I said, like, look, my Italian's not so great. Like, can you please speak slower or maybe use a different word? And anytime they got, like, slightly frustrated, they would just hang up. And I'm like, I'm trying here. I'm trying to help take care of this issue. You keep calling me. I'm not calling you. What's going on here? Yeah, little things like that. This one's a tough one because I don't feel like I have a way of fully explaining this thought in a way that really gets the point across that I'm trying to make. But think about it like this. Do you remember a time in your own country, your own homeland, when you were at a store or you were someplace and either you or somebody else you were with or just somebody who was working at that store or whatever the interaction was, and maybe there was a person who your language was not their first language. And either you started or somebody else there started speaking to them at a higher volume because you thought that would help them to understand you. Those times when a person just can't get out what they want. <laughs> I'm going through the same problem right now in my own language of being able to verbally express themselves and having difficulty to speak the language you can hear an accent or they're not understanding. That feeling of being a foreigner and kind of being treated like you're less than, uh, that's something that I've definitely gone through and I do miss not having that feeling. I do try to learn Italian, but I my Italian is still very limited. I can speak kind of, but I can't express my thoughts and I'm always stumbling over my words I always feel like in the few clips that you guys have heard you haven't heard how bad it really really gets <laughs> but that feeling of just being able to live to be able to express to be able to just get from one part of the day to the next part of the day without any kind of hiccups in between that's probably the thing that would be the most missed um, about living in America. But even with all of this said, I'm still here 11 years later, um, still with close to no desire to go back, not even for a visit. Every once in a while, like over the past years, like when I needed a new computer or a camera or something, the shopping in America didn't sound half bad, but I just don't feel the need or the desire. Years and years ago, when I really would say that was the time that I really did miss living in America, it still wasn't enough to want to bring me back. And over time, that feeling has just become less and less and less. And I'm actually very curious to how I'm going to feel about it in five years from now, 10 years from now, another 11 years from now, if that feeling is going to be kind of, if this is the plateau or if it's going to even get less. Because as time goes on, I've said this in videos before, but I have felt like that I don't necessarily relate to other Americans uh, like how I used to. Like I feel almost less and less American as time goes on, just further removed from things. And um, just there's, with having been gone for 10 years now, and there's just certain cultural things that have developed that I just... That's not part of my experience having lived in America. And this is something also I've talked about in other videos with like uh, Italian Americans versus Italians that our ancestors, for those of us who are Italian American, left Italy and that was their idea of the country at that time. And as I'm talking about it now, even I'm really even more coming to this realization about how I've spoken about this before and it never really clicked. 
but that just as time goes on where the country was at that point in time versus your personal experience of it. The way I'd always thought about it in the past was, yes, this was my ancestors' experience and what they experienced is different than what it was by the time they are older. But now that's actually becoming part of my own reality that the country that I left and the country that it is today are a little bit different. Spend 10 years abroad and then let's talk. <laughs> I would say one of the other reasons why I have not gone back to America is because it's not really going back for me. It's going to because I've been abroad for so long and it's really that I'd be starting out completely fresh. It's like going to a foreign country almost for me. Um, I would have to learn a bit about how certain things work there. And also because I have like almost no family there anymore that it would like there's no support system. There's no... um, anything really there for me to kind of reach out in case something happens. So it would be really um, starting out completely fresh, almost like moving to a foreign country, like I was saying. I hope at least a few of you found this interesting to hear the opinion of somebody who has been living abroad, especially if you are thinking about living abroad and and hearing some about this expat life, if that's changed your opinion in some way of wanting to live abroad, or I'm curious as to what you guys might have to say about like your own experience of wanting to go abroad, or for those of you who are already living abroad, how has it been for you to be abroad? Do you miss America? Do you ever have the desire to go back? Do you go back? Do you go back for vacations? I know most Americans seem to do that, but there are a group of us that it almost seems like a growing group of us that don't go back, that either have no desire to go back or just end up not doing it because it costs too much. I would say I'm probably in both categories, but more in the just lack of desire to go back category. But for those of you who have been living abroad, I'm curious to hear about your experience. Do you miss living in your country, America, Canada, China, wherever it may be, I'm, I'm Bangladesh, India, wherever it may be that you're from, I'm, I'm curious to hear about your experience. Do you miss your home country? If you do, what is it that you miss about it? Do you have any desire to go back there one day? Is that your goal? Because um, I know there are a lot of people who move abroad uh, to go make a better life for themselves, earn some money, and then go back to their home country, bring that money with them, and build up a life for themselves back where they're from. But then I know there are a lot of people who intend on doing that, but end up finding that their new life in their new country actually is maybe the life that they wanted to begin with. So whatever your experience is, whether you are an expat or you're thinking about becoming an expat or not even thinking about becoming an expat, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this conversation. And of course, as always, it's an open conversation. And if you have anything to say, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below here on YouTube. And if you have any questions about anything I've spoken about in this video or any other videos that I've spoken about, or even if something I've never spoken about in any of my videos, feel free to leave it down there as well. And of course, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be greatly appreciated as it does help out the channel. And if you would like to help out the channel in another way and to help make videos like this possible on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldefudia.com slash Patreon, or to help out just one time, you can go to rafaeldefudia.com slash support. And for shirts, baby onesies, mugs and more like posters with italy centric designs you can go to rafaeldefodia.com slash n-y-a-g gear all of the links are down below and truly a huge thank you to those of you who are helping to make these videos possible i can never thank you guys enough it's because of you guys that these videos happen so really thank you so much and of course as always i'm rafael de Furia, aka rafi d is me thank you for joining me on another beautiful friday night i hope you all have a wonderful weekend and a great week ahead of you look forward to seeing you all next Friday. Later.